There is way too much coaching churn in college football. Way too much. Haven't really talked about this a lot on the show, but there is an absurd amount of movement in the coaching industry. And I'm, I'm not talking about guys who get fired. And I'm not talking about guys who take massive leaps promotionally. That's understandable. No one's mad at that. I'm not even suggesting a rule change in the world of college football coaching movement. I'm more suggesting an attitude change. You know, in a perfect world, you don't have to tell guys, hey, don't be preaching loyalty and accountability and brotherhood only to make a lateral move two weeks after you said it. You shouldn't have to be telling folks that. In a perfect world, they just get it because they're practicing what they're preaching. Some guys in this industry do. Many of them do. Some of them don't. So we went up to Iowa State Thursday. We had a live show from Ames, and they welcomed us in. And earlier in the day, I sat down with Matt Campbell. And uh, there was a clip from the interview I had with Matt Campbell that I cannot recommend to you enough. I put it out on the social channels, and it went crazy. And had a lot of, a lot of you coaches reach out behind the scenes and say, thank you for that. Like, we wish that message was out there more. Because, see, in the coaching community, a lot of guys – look at other guys hopping all around. They don't like it because they know it reflects poorly on the industry as a whole, not just those specific coaches. So, you know, then all coaches get a bad rap for it. And uh, it's not totally unearned. So I'm going to play a piece of sound for you. And I want you to think as you listen to this, what is your perfect world? Because a lot of people have complained about the player movement. And, and players going all over the place. And then other people have yelled back, well, coaches do it all the time, and that's this ongoing debate in college football. Well, stop for a second and then ask, in a perfect world, what does coaching movement look like? And um, as you're picturing that, tell me if it doesn't sound a whole heck of a lot like the world Matt Campbell explains himself living in. And short of like internet rumors, there's never been really serious traction to you not being here. So. Could you walk people through as much as you can the thought process you have when you have opportunity? You know, I, I, I've been that guy where it's like, geez, should I be climbing this this ladder of job to job um, at a really young age to, you know, when we got to Iowa State and have been able to build something different. And I know, you know, for me, leaving the University of Toledo was really hard, to be quite honest. Um, you know, from Ohio, my wife and I had never left Ohio at that time. Three kids with a fourth on the way. Um, we had grandparents and family that were, you know, anchors to us. And it was really hard to leave. And, you know, that was the first time I said, geez, I... I I don't know if this is what I want to do. I want to be able to lay roots and build something different and something that's really special that can stand for something. And, you know, I think that's the one gratitude that I have for being the head coach. I walk in here every day and I'm just beyond grateful to be the head football coach at Iowa State. And, you know, we've been able to build a program and build a program that I really believe stands for something. And on top of that, as we've had our successes and some of that outside noise has come in, you know, even personally for me, I've always gone back to the checklist of number one, um, I wanted to be a great father. I want to be a great husband. I never wanted to, you know, um, let the profession ruin what's most important to me, and that's my family. And number two, you want to work for great people and with great people. And, you know, I think I'm really fortunate that, you know, we've got great trust within our athletic department department here, within our administration here, um, within our coaching staff here. That's been really important and it's a joy to come in every day and work with people that are aligned to the same vision. And then I think the, the third part of it, which is probably the most important part, is what do you stand for in this profession? Um, you know, I, I think for me it's been I wanted to build something that allows young people to feel confident and to feel trusted when they come into our football program that they can go through this profound transition that they're going through in life, 18 years old, leaving home for the first time, getting into this uber competitive environment, and all of a sudden you want that support, you want that trust that your coach is going to be there, that these people are going to be there, and they're building something that's going to support this journey that should change your life forever if it's done correctly. And, you know, I, I think that's something that we've been really proud of because we've been able to build that kind of football program here. So really as as my own journeys happen, I think defining who are you, what do you want to stand for, and what are the type of people that you want to surround yourself with, and we've been really fortunate to be able to do that here. So I want you to ask yourself, does that sound like how you wish more coaches thought? And if the answer is yes, which I think it is for most of you, ask yourself this. 
What are the most recent comments you've made about Matt Campbell? Because I'm looking at the live chat here, and it's pretty, pretty similar to what I would normally hear out there. You'd probably be painfully misguided on what history is at Iowa State. You know, a seven or eight win season at Iowa State's a really big deal. I, I don't know if you guys understand that. And he does that and probably will be in that range again this year. So are you crediting guys like that? Are you praising guys like that? Or are you claiming you want something, but then when someone exhibits what you claim you want, are you trying to dunk on them to get 37 retweets? That's the first thing I'd ask. The second thing I'd ask is, that's great just in isolation. But you know what the bigger picture here is, right? I think most of you do because most of you are participating in this right now. I am too. Uh, so us, most of us are participating in this conversation. And the conversation sounds a little something like this. Don't you be complaining about these players moving around if you're going to move around as well. And we've long since addressed the differences in coaches and players on this show. Coaches are not players. Coaches have contracts. And when you violate the terms in that contract, there's a buyout to be paid. So it's not penalty free. No one's suggesting it is. But for broad strokes purposes, you know as well as I do, those coaches are in those locker rooms, those coaches are in those position rooms, and they're preaching one thing and practicing another far too often. And so that's a valid argument. I have uh, spoken about this several times just this month alone of the fact that even though I readily admit there is a difference in coaches and players, and I readily admit it's not the exact same thing when a, a, an offensive lineman goes from Alabama to Iowa and then Iowa back to Alabama as a coach moving, it is pretty ridiculous and does make the argument pretty moot when you do have everywhere from coaches to athletic directors out there taking a job and then being gone weeks to a few months after they sign on the dotted line. How are you about to preach accountability or loyalty or consistency to a group of 18 to 22 year olds when a group of 40 to 60 year olds can't practice the same characteristics and things? So I get it. I get it and I have a hard time pushing back on that. There is a realm of movement that everyone understands. Okay, in other words, if I'm the defensive coordinator at Middle Tennessee State and the University of Tennessee offers me the defensive coordinator position, it is understandable that I would make that leap. If I'm the head coach at Middle Tennessee State and the University of Tennessee offers me their head coaching position, it's understandable I would make that leap. But some of these dudes' Wikipedia pages roll out like a scroll. And it's just this lateral movement. It's movement for the sake of movement. Now, as negative as that sounds, I do want to say this. There are a lot of guys, there are a lot of coaches out there who turn down offers every cycle. And most of the legitimate offers that are there, you know, most of the legitimate opportunities to take that guys decline, you never hear about. A lot of times when you hear about it, it's, it's posturing from an agent and we all get how that game's played. So I, I do hat tip, I salute everyone who does that. I had a head coach recently who I know had, had offers on the table that every one of us would have looked at and said, that job is better than the one you have. Not light years better, but this job and this job, they're better than the ones you have. And I had that coach look at me and say, that's the thing. They're marginally better. Is that really what I want to be? Is that what I want to do? Do I want to just climb rungs on the ladder for the sake of climbing? Do I want to be seen as a mercenary? Do I want to take my kids out of a school? Most importantly, he said, I've been preaching one thing to this locker room since I've been here. Do I want to practice the other thing? Really, it's as simple as that. I, I think at the end of the day, that's all a lot of people are asking. Just if you, if, you claim, if you espouse these values and beliefs, just practice them. I appreciate Matt Campbell saying that uh, because he didn't even know we were going there. He, he, I, I, in fact, I have no notes in these interviews because I want it to be that way. And um, that was a really good conversation we had with him. That entire conversation is on the YouTube channel if you want to see it.